but we want to start with our top story, and it is a sad one. A tribute to American aid worker Kayla Mueller, who died in the hands of ISIS. Those tributes are growing in her hometown of Prescott, Arizona. Meantime, President Obama is vowing this morning to bring her captors to justice. NBC's chief foreign affairs correspondent Andrea Mitchell broke the story of Mueller's death. Andrea, good morning to you. Good morning, Savannah. Such a terrible, sad story. Kayla's death, not only devastating for her family in Prescott, it's an enormous blow to legions of military and intelligence officials who have spent 18 months trying to save her on orders of President Obama. For 18 months, the White House agonized over her fate. She was everyone's daughter, sister, friend, bright, adventurous, compassionate, as the president told Ben Smith of BuzzFeed. My immediate reaction is heartbreak. The frantic efforts to save her had included a forces raid last July. It missed finding Kayla and three other Americans who were later beheaded by only a day or two. For months, her family's senator, John McCain, circled the region seeking help from foreign leaders. I want to express the deepest condolences to Kayla's parents. There was talk of a prisoner trade, but no relenting on the U.S. policy of not paying ransom. It's as tough as anything that I do having conversation with parents uh, who understandably uh, want uh, by any means necessary for their children to be safe. And five months after the U.S. started battling ISIS, the president is today asking for war authority from a deeply divided Congress. The challenge will be to more narrowly define how American ground troops can be used. If we set a precedent that somehow Congress is setting restrictions or parameters around the commander in chief, then we're violating the Constitution. The president's proposal coming today will rule out a large ground force and limits the war to three years. But many now say that Kayla Mueller's death is just the latest sign of how hard it's going to be to defeat this vicious terror group. Matt and Savannah brings it home. Andrea Mitchell, thank you so much. Even in her darkest days, Kayla Mueller managed to find the brighter side, and her life is being honored, as we mentioned this morning, in her hometown. NBC's Joe Fryer is there. Joe, good morning to you. Good morning, Matt. Here in Kayla Mueller's hometown, she is being remembered for how she lived, through memories shared by her family and through her own words. By every account from her friends and family, Kayla Mueller's death could never overshadow her unselfish life. She has done more in her incredible 26 years than many people could ever imagine doing in their lifetime. The news is resonating well beyond her hometown of Prescott. Across the country, people are touched by her last spring while she was in captivity, then smuggled out by cellmates. Please know that I am in a safe location, completely unharmed and healthy, she wrote. I have been treated with the utmost respect and kindness. She told her parents, the thought of your pain is the source of my own. Simultaneously, the hope of our reunion is the source of my strength. She had a quiet, calming presence. She was a free spirit. <laughs> always standing up for those who were suffering and wanting to be their voice. U.S. officials tell NBC News relatives received a photo of Mueller in which she appeared to be dead with trauma injuries, but the cause of death is unclear. Last week, ISIS claimed Mueller was killed in a Jordanian airstrike, but U.S. officials have seen no proof. I am in solidarity with the Syrian people. Mueller was captured in August of 2013 near Aleppo. She had been working for aid groups along the Turkish-Syrian border. Her passion was raising awareness about Syrian refugees. I'm not yet sure how to live in a world without Kayla, but I do know that we're all living in a better world because of her. One more note about Mueller's letter. She could only write it little by little, a paragraph at a time. Plans are now underway to honor her, including at her alma mater, Northern Arizona University. Matt and Savannah. Uh, Joe, thank you very much. Even in her death, her words are incredibly inspiring. And take time today to read them if you have the chance. Meantime, the